Hello fans of all ages, if you're listening to this you probably already know who I am or if you're watching this right on YouTube. My name is Ryan Morick, uh, I am a sports writer for SNY. I used to work for the New York Mets both in their media relations department as well as their sales department and if you know me well enough you know that I've done podcasting and broadcasting and obviously writing for a long time now and it's been a while since I got into the podcast slash YouTube game. Did it for a little while and then issues with work, I stopped doing it. Now I'm getting back into it because I need to start taking my goals a little bit more seriously and I need to start building my own brand and taking that a little bit more seriously. So here I am, I guess this is another first of me. And uh, if you've been listening to me for the last, uh, it's been like six years now since I think I recorded my very first podcast in my old backyard or in my old sophomore college year dorm room so if you've been with me since the beginning thank you very much but uh this is the start of a new journey i guess like i said it's time for me to take this thing a little bit more seriously and do what i love to do and while writing i obviously <laughs> i obviously love to do it broadcasting and podcasting has been my ultimate dream job for as long as i can remember so if you know me well enough you know that I'm a diehard New York Yankees fan. So I guess that's the first thing I should be talking about on my quote unquote first episode, I guess. So here we go. The New York Yankees still have not re-signed DJ LeMahieu. And I'm getting to the point now where I feel like that might be okay. Some of you listening to this are probably already exiting out within the first two minutes of this. And that's totally fine. I get it. I love DJ LeMahieu. DJ LeMahieu has been the Yankees MVP for the last two years. He finished in fourth, no, he finished in third this year and fourth in 2019. We all know what he is capable of doing. He's basically what Derek Jeter was from 99 to 97, really, or even his rookie year, 96 to 2009-ish. DJ LeMahieu has hit for more power than Derek Jeter ever did. DJ LeMahieu is that spark plug in the Yankee lineup that isn't a home run or a strikeout. He is a contact hitter who can spray the ball to all fields. We all know that. When DJ LeMahieu came up in that Cleveland game, when I think at that point they were down two runs, it was the bases loaded, Base hit dribbler up the middle. You just know that DJ LeMahieu was going to get it done. Game six against the Astros in 2019. You knew that DJ LeMahieu was just going to do something to keep the rally going. And sure enough, he has an opposite field home run to tie the game. That was the best moment ever up until we all know what happened after that. But the fact of the matter is, everything that's going on with the pandemic, the Yankees have been very vocal. And they've been pretty honest with us. And they have said that they've lost more money than just about anyone in all the sports, let alone baseball. So with that being said, I feel like Yankee fans need to have some real expectations here. And I feel like Yankee fans need to realize that they might not be able to bring in DJ LeMahieu and Michael Brantley and Masahiro Tanaka and Trevor Bauer. The Yankees are really going to have to pick and choose what they want to do this offseason. And that's weird for Yankee fans to say because Yankee fans never miss out on the guy that they want. 2009, CeCe Sabathia, AJ Burnett, Mark Teixeira. Surely enough, Teixeira fell in their lap, but they wanted CeCe Sabathia and AJ Burnett. They got them. 2014, they wanted Jacoby Ellsbury, but they went out and got him. They got Masahiro Tanaka in that offseason. Most recently, Garrett Cole. No one was going to outbid the New York Yankees for Garrett Cole. No one was going to do it. They went out and got their guy. And the thing is, the Yankees have made it known that they want DJ LeMahieu. The Yankees have been very vocal about that. They have said that DJ LeMahieu is their number one target. And he should be. If you look at everything in a vacuum, sure. But there's a big con to signing DJ LeMahieu. And let's say that it's five for a hundred million. But you have to remember that Aaron Judge is getting a raise. Gary Sanchez, believe it or not, is getting a raise. They're gonna have to start paying Gleyber Torres and Gio Urshela very soon. They're gonna have to start paying Luke Voigt very soon. So all these baby bombers that they have that they've been living on their rookie contracts pre-arbitration for, that's almost over. And then you have to remember that they obviously have Giancarlo Stan's contract for the next, what is it, seven years. Seven years of Giancarlo Stan. And I'm okay with that. Stanton needs to stay healthy, but when he's on the field, he's a great player. We all know that. We all saw what he did in the postseason. But again, 
Believe it or not, money is tight for the New York Yankees. And that's an odd sentence to say, but it's true. And you look across town, the New York Mets, they're involved in just about everyone. They're very close to getting James McCann. They're very close to getting George Springer. They're still in on Trevor Bauer. They could still be in for JT Real Muto. It doesn't sound like that's a realistic option for them because this is my point with the Yankees. I get it. Steve Cohen is this rich multi-billionaire who is by far the richest owner in all of sports. Even Steve Cohen can't get JT Real Muto and Trevor Bauer, and then trade for whoever, Mike Trout. He can't just spend hundreds of millions of dollars just because he can. This is a business where you need to be smart in how you're spending your money and where you're deviating it to. And that's the situation that the Yankees are in. And what's one of the biggest problems with the New York Yankees? And has been for years, starting pitching. And then when you look at this rotation, and Aaron Boone has not hesitated to take a starter out in the fifth or sixth inning and go to that bullpen that has been dominant. It's not that dominant anymore, that bullpen. That bullpen is now missing Tommy Canley. He had Tommy John surgery and the Yankees just let him go. Adam Onovino is a big question mark now. He struggled big time last year. You trust Chad Green and Aroldis Chapman. Look, I think he's more than dominant, but he has not come up big in big moments. Two years in a row, he has allowed the pitch that ended the Yankee season, essentially. Literally with Jose Altuve in 2019. And then uh, Mike Brousseau, who took him deep in the ALDS Game 5 in the 8th inning. Rightfully so, Yankee fans shouldn't trust the world this time. And I get that he's not Mariano Rivera. And his numbers are still very good. But in the postseason, you look at Rashi Davis in 2016. What is it? Three of the last five years, he has almost, he has or almost has choked away everything so that scares you if you're the new york yankees they need depth from this starting rotation but what is their rotation right now it's garrett cole and at most four question marks personally i like jordan montgomery a lot i think jordan montgomery was a stud his rookie year finished with an era of sub four and look when you allow just one run in four innings in a do or die well shouldn't i shouldn't say do or die but it was an elimination game for the yankees Jordan Montgomery saved the New York Yankees. He might have been their best pitcher against the Rays in that entire series, arguably. Maybe Garrett Cole also, obviously. I trust Jordan Montgomery, but guys I don't trust are Luis Severino, who has tossed, including the playoffs, 25 innings in the last two years. You'll look at David Garcia, who I get that he's a 21-year-old rookie, but the Yankees didn't trust him enough to go the distance, let alone more than one inning in the postseason. Clark Smith, Mike King, Jonathan Loisaga, that's the Yankees' options right now in the starting rotation. Those are all question marks. I consider Luis Severino a question mark, and he's not even going to be back until June or July. And then what's going to happen? Maybe another injury. Two years in a row, major injuries for Luis Severino. And you're kind of getting him on a bargain. You're only paying him $10 million a year, but not the point. The point is, right now, the Yankees just don't have the pitching depth that they need. And with this offense that's hot and cold, strike out or home run. Yes, you need DJ LeMahieu at the top of that lineup. But if you get DJ LeMahieu, look, guys are reporting that they might need, not even get Masio Tanaka even if they get LeMahieu, which I think is bizarre. I think that the Yankees should do everything in their power to get Masio Tanaka back in New York. He has performed for you on the biggest stage. Granted, last postseason was, was pretty rough for him. But I also think that he didn't really benefit from that rain out in Cleveland. The, the Rays shelled him. The Rays are a good team. They took the Dodgers to six games. When you bring in DJ LeMahieu, as great as that is for the offense, and I get it that he's been the MVP. Would it be the worst thing in the world for the New York Yankees to say, DJ, thanks, but we are going to get a guy like Michael Brantley, great outfielder. He's a pure hitter also. He can hit 300 plus. He can hit 20 somewhat home runs at Yankee Stadium nonetheless. No, he's not going to hit 350 like DJ LeMahieu did. But remember what LeMahieu was when he first came to New York. He wasn't on the opening day roster in 2019. He was hitting, what, 230 away from Coors Field? I think if you gave Brian Cashman some truth serum, he would say, we never expected that out of DJ LeMahieu. This is now the player that he is. And let's say maybe if you do get Michael Brantley, he has some sort of resurgence and does become that type of hitter. But let's just assume that he's not. Let's just assume that Michael Brantley does what he's been doing for the last three years. You have the guy in the top of your lineup who's not going to strike out, who's going to work pitches. And then on top of that, you can afford to re-sign Masahiro Tanaka. Are there any other better options right now on the free agent market? And it's not like Masahiro Tanaka is going to cost that much money. 
the Yankees didn't even bother him to offer him a qualifying offer. And it doesn't really sound like a lot of teams, I'm sure that they're interested in Masio Tanaka, but have we heard anything that's coming close to a deal? I think the Mets are keeping tabs on him, but again, he's not going to cost you that much money. And if you're the New York Yankees, you couldn't wait to sign j Hat for three for, what was it, three for 36? You can't wait to bring j Hat that kind of contract, but you're hesitant about giving that to Masio Tanaka? And I know what everyone's gonna say, his elbow, his elbow, his elbow, I can't even talk anymore. That's a non-issue. It hasn't been an issue since it happened. Masio Tanaka, ironically enough, over his entire duration of the contract with the New York Yankees, he was the healthiest pitcher. CC went on the IL a couple of times. Severino has two major injuries. Jordan Montgomery got Tommy John surgery. Michael Pineda couldn't stay on the field for more than uh, 100 innings in a season. Masahiro Tanaka, you were able to pencil him in for at least 150 innings. And I know that the ideal number for a pitcher is 200. But again, keep in mind that Aaron Boone was never hesitant to go into this bullpen, ever. Because that was the strength of the ball club. And yeah, Masahiro Tanaka did go on the IL a couple of times, but it was never for his elbow. That, to me is a non-issue. If it hasn't been an issue in seven years, I would be very surprised to see a team not take him in. Who knows, maybe the Yankees actually do know something. Maybe that is the reason why they didn't give him a qualifying offer. Or they are interested in bringing him in for multi-years for cheaper, which I think is a very good possibility, similar to a J-Hat deal. Why wouldn't you want to give that to Masahiro Tanaka? He's been there on the mound for your biggest games in some of the most recent years. And again, he didn't perform this past offseason, uh, postseason, I should say, but the guy's a dog. Yeah, he might give up the long ball, but when he has his stuff, he's on. So I think if you're the Yankees, I think you really need to pick your poison and say, look, we can either get DJ LeMahieu and then, honestly, if they take DJ Mayhew, they could probably take a shot at, like, a Corey Kluber, who would be a low-risk, high-reward for one year, a, a few million bucks, which I'm not totally against at all, because if Corey Kluber is what he can be, he's a Cy Young candidate. He's already won two. But do I really think that the Yankees are just going to spend that kind of money if they sign DJ LeMahieu to $20-plus million? I don't think so, because you do have to pay all these young guys again every year. It has been, they don't have enough pitching. They didn't get Patrick Corbin. They didn't get uh, Justin Verlander a few years ago. But do I really think that the Yankees are going to get LeMahieu and then bring in a guy like Tanaka or Jake Odorizzi? Charlie Morton's already off the board. Drew Smiley's already off the board. Mike Miner's already off the board. There's no shot in hell that they're going to get LeMahieu and Trevor Bauer. Not a shot. I don't even think the Yankees are in contention for Trevor Bauer at all. And Trevor Bauer is an interesting case, obviously, because... We know the story about how he only needs to sign, he wants to sign a one-year deal because he loses a bet with his friend because he gets shot in his private parts with a paintball gun. Weird, but what? whatever. If you're a Yankee fan, what would you rather have? DJ LeMayhew, second baseman, gold glove, MVP candidate for five years. We don't know what that's going to look like, by the way, in his age 35, 36, 37 seasons. I'm not worried about that. I think that you have been a World Series contender for four seasons in a row now, and I think it's time for you to really hit the gas pedal as hard as you can and get your best guys. That sounds like the obvious answer here, but you have to take into consideration that you're probably not going to get a very good pitcher if you bring in DJ LeMahieu. You bring in LeMahieu and say, look, we're gonna ride with the pitching staff and you pray that David Garcia is a stud, Clark Schmidt is a stud, who I'm confident in. I like Clark Schmidt's stuff. I like David Garcia's stuff. But they've only had, what, a combined 10 starts in the big leagues? If that, it's a big risk for a World Series contender to just say, hey, you know what? Screw it. We don't need pitching. When we saw a pitching staff that, like the Tampa Bay Rays, we saw a pitching staff like the Washington Nationals who had a crappy bullpen, but their starters were amazing. Houston Astros obviously making the World Series with Verlander and Gary Cole and Zach Greinke. And then their bullpen was lights out in October out of nowhere. So you really need to pick your battles. Would you rather have DJ LeMahieu and have, it can be a very elite pitching staff, but if they're not good, you are screwed. So would you rather have that? Or would you rather have Masio Tanaka back and Michael Brantley. I don't know what kind of money each of those guys are looking for. I think that if you're the New York Yankees, you really need to decide if you want one player or some depth in both the field and in your rotation. We'll see what happens with LeMahieu and Tanaka, etc. If you are listening and or watching, thank you, first of all, for your support and even clicking on this in the first place, it means a lot. Keep listening and watching. I am going to pump out some more content for all you guys to enjoy. So, Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.